We want to uh, greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're grateful for everyone that's here today. We look forward to sharing with you the things that the Lord has given us to share. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians. You know, uh, a lot of times people are <laughs> when we uh, talk about demon possession and uh, demonic influence, a lot of times people, uh, they look for the examples that the Hollywood may have painted for them. Uh, they're looking for um, head spinning. They're looking for some kind of violence, maybe a foul mouth. You know, I, I watched a demon possession one time where a man was spitting up glass just constantly, spitting up glass, coming from his stomach through his throat. You know, there was, he didn't have that much glass just piled up in his mouth. It was coming from his inner being, you know, just spitting up glass without bleeding, you know, just... And uh, when I say spitting it up, I mean, he wasn't coughing it up. It was just coming up and out of his mouth. Just, and he was just as calm as I am now with it just coming out like that. So a lot of times uh, when um, we talk about demon possession and we talk about spirits, a lot of times people are looking for those extraordinary uh, displays. Uh, but you have to know that the... That the um, those are rare things in public uh, because the devil uh, want to hide and uh, he don't want people to know that he's around or that he's um, uh, functioning in people, see? So it, it, uh, that's a last resort. Usually when the devil starts cutting up like that, it's because some, something is there that that he's intimidated by that can cast him out other than that he he prefer to remain incognito and so usually when people see those displays or when those displays happen it's the devil trying to invoke fear in people okay so i can't hide anymore you know i'm here so let me go overboard uh, on the other end uh to make uh to invoke fear because he knows that he he don't have to come out if the person that's casting him out has any kind of fear see and so, um, so we're going to read the, the fourth chapter of the book of Second Corinthians. We'll start reading at verse 1. And we'll, we want to look at some things from this end. See, So therefore, seeing we have this ministry, Let's go back. Let's go back to chapter three. Let, we'll start reading at verse 12 with, just to kind of make this make sense to you. Verse 12 says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Everybody see that now? And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Everybody see that? But their minds were what? Their minds were what now? For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away where? Where is it done away? Where is it done away? Everybody see that? So basically what Paul is saying is, is that your mind is blinded and there's a veil between you and the things of God if you're not in Christ. Only Christ can take that veil away. Only Christ can take that veil away. Does everybody see that now? Now, what did Paul say before then? We use great plainness of speech. Isn't that what he said? Now, y'all hold on to that. What kind of speech was he using? 
<laughs> Everybody see that? Let's go ahead and keep reading. But even, verse 15, but even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is where? Where is it at? What does the heart have to do with knowledge? The heart is what processes and gives you understanding. It's what makes you believe it. And Paul is saying that even when Moses is read today, the veil is upon their hearts. They still don't understand how the Old Testament and New Testament, what they have to do with each other. There are some churches that forbid their people to read the Old Testament. They will not read the Old Testament because they have no idea. Now, here's the thing. You do not understand and appreciate the New Testament if you don't know the Old Testament. You don't know what you've been redeemed from. Does everybody see that now? If it's a child out there swimming in the water and I come up and they just out there swimming and I say, hey, I'm here to save you. Aren't you glad? They're going to look at me and say, save me from what? I'm out here floating and having fun. So what did the Old Testament do? It made people understand that they were drowning and that they needed a savior. But if you just start with the New Testament, <laughs> then, the, then it won't, the New Testament don't make any sense to you because you out there floating and backstroking and butterflying and everything else. But that Old Testament make you know you are in trouble. You are, that's what the, that was the purpose of the Old Covenant. It was our schoolmaster to bring us unto grace. So now, in today's world, people have a hard time even accepting grace and understanding grace because they don't know that they were in trouble. So what's you tell you, especially this self-entitled generation? What do you mean? I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I do this, I do, and what does God care? You could feed, your, the, feed the hungry on your way to hell. You can give your body to be burned for somebody else and you still can go to hell. Outside of Jesus Christ, we're nothing. It's, it don't matter how much good you do. It was people doing good in the Old Testament and still went to hell. So that Old Testament, it makes you know, first of all, how holy God is and what he thinks about sin. And then it makes you understand that nobody in the Old Testament could overcome it outside of God. And so when the New Testament comes, we understand, okay, so we don't have to do sacrifices anymore. Does everybody see that now? We can leave the animal, we can actually, we can leave the poor animals alone. Because they not out sinning, we were. Everybody see that now? So it, it's very hard for this self-entitled generation where everybody gets a participation trophy to really understand grace. There are no losers in this generation. Everybody get a participation trophy. Does everybody understand that now? Could you imagine? Do you know, do y'all know what happened on the Super Bowl? How many of you ever watched the Super Bowl? Do you know why it's not such a big deal? Why nobody's really crying? Because everybody's still getting paid. Even if they lose, they get paid. Now you tell the teams before they play the Super Bowl, if you lose, you're not getting paid. In fact, your whole year is just up. Just tell the whole NFL. The only way you get paid this year is if you win the Super Bowl. They'll be bringing knives, brass knuckles. All of that will be a part of the game. <laughs> but when you got players who are going to get paid millions of dollars a year, win or lose, then what's my motivation for winning? Nothing. So now you see why so many teams are not as good as what they can be if you, if, if you get paid anyway. So let's say, if they, does everybody understand what I'm saying now? That's the generation we live in. Win or lose, you get paid good. And so how does that translate today? No matter how raggedy your life is, you're still in good with God. You can be the biggest sinner you ever want to be, and, and God still accepts you. <laughs> Listen, brothers and sisters, um, 
that's the reason why that veil is over their face because they have no understanding of what they're reading don't even see a reason to read the old testament you see that and so it it makes it plain to us how much we appreciate how much we can appreciate uh, the presence of god that's that's the reason why people can just just you know the things of god are not holy to them anymore uh, because of this this the mindset that this generation have you see uh when i was growing up uh, we loved playing loud music and uh um those types of things that were not holy music but i can remember whenever we turned down the street that the church was on we turned the music down and turned it off until we passed the church you see that's the way we were uh, people weren't stealing from churches uh, but today people are <laughs> they're turning it up louder to this to out of spite you see that and so that veil is is up on their hearts verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the lord the veil shall be what everybody's now i want y'all you, you're going to have to hold these things in your heart as we go on so that you can understand what all the lord is saying to us what's going to take the veil away when we, when it turned to the lord isn't that right look now let's read that again let's go back to verse 15 but even until this day when moses is read the veil is upon what what is it upon nevertheless when it shall be when it shall turn to the lord what is it your heart not you everybody claiming to turn to the lord but is your heart turned to him when your heart turned to the lord then what everybody see now verse 17 now the lord is that what and where the spirit of the lord is what is it what's there now freedom now this is where the christians and believers joy come in now one way i know that somebody's heart is not turned to the lord is when living for the lord is hard and there's a bunch of rules and regulations and i'm tired and i'm trying and ain't nothing working I, I can tell you what your problem is your heart don't belong to the lord your heart don't your heart ain't turned to the lord that's why it says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is where is it what is it there is liberty where liberty is there is joy i'm free i'm not i don't feel like i'm bound by the bible i'm free with it <laughs> it ain't just a bunch of rules and regulations does everybody understand that now i would be a depressed depressed somebody if the way i was living for god was reading this bible and hoping that i can keep it that would make me not want to read it every scripture is a new command i just rather read one scripture and go to heaven on that so it becomes an issue it's just a bunch of rules and regular what kind of god is that and, and then you learn to defy and hate god in your heart and god is saying yeah I, i'm gonna frustrate you you ain't gonna be able to live it until this gets into this when your heart turned to the lord he nails this bible into your heart now you just living it without effort now you living it without effort you just living it it's certain things that are coming to you like no i don't i don't feel like the lord would be pleased if i do that and then a year later you read it in the bible and say oh, okay so that's okay that's the reason why i didn't feel led to do that because god's word is in your heart then and you're just living it does everybody see that now let's go ahead and keep reading verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed everybody see that what are we into what 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 image is it the glory of the lord 
we are changed into the image of the glory of the Lord. That means we just living it. We look like him. We act like him. We talk like him without having to read the Bible over and over and over and over again and memorize scriptures and trying to live. We just are. Does everybody see that now? Look at what that says. Even as by what? By what now? The Spirit of the Lord is what, what activates that. Now, that's the reason why it's dangerous for folks to hear the Spirit of the Lord tell them something, and then they ignore it. The Lord say, keep your mouth shut. No, uh-uh, uh-uh, not this time. I got to get it out. Does everybody see that? And then the next day, you're praying on your face, wondering, Lord, why I can't live it? Why am I having such a hard time? Does everybody see that now? Let's go on down to chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, what do we do? We faint not. We don't get tired. Now, what is he talking about? Folks, when he's talking about fainting, he's talking about people feeling discouraged. I'm so discouraged because I'm trying and it ain't working. First of all, ask yourself, does your heart belong to the Lord? This Bible don't lie. If your heart belong to him, you're going to live this word. And you ain't going to get discouraged and ready to throw your hands up. Does everybody see that now? Let me let me share with you. I want to just be personal with you, and, and I want to share something with you. You know, it, listen, brothers and sisters. So y'all, do y'all remember the testimony from Joshua from a couple of weeks ago and, and last week? Do y'all remember what he said about what? How he said, you know, I wasn't. I just accepted my fate. I, I wasn't afraid to die and go to hell until the Lord said it's next week. <laughs> Until the Lord said, let's start building your coffin. <laughs> Does everybody see that? So what am I trying to say? It's easy to throw your hands up when you think you got another 40, 50 years to live. It's easy to go into depressed mode and woe is me mode when you got 20 years to climb out of that hole. <laughs> But what happens when the Lord show you your coffin? What happens when he tell you, when he take you out to the graveyard and tell you, pick you where you want to be buried at? Okay, Lord, I was just, I was just playing. I'm okay. I'm going to live right. Does everybody see now? So if you don't know what day the Lord's coming for you, you ought to act like he's coming today. <laughs> That it'll make you take your walk with the Lord more serious. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? So you, if, if you understand that, you get out of discouraged mode. You, you don't faint if you know you the problem. <laughs> and it ain't, God ain't missing it on his end. You the problem. Everybody see now? So that's, 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 that's like you follow on the menu a uh, recipe, and it ain't coming out right because you adding your own little whatever to it. It don't get mad at the recipe. It's you and your extra. The recipe will work every single time if you do it exactly the way those people tell you to do it. But when you get to adding your own little salt, and your hot sauce. <laughs> I'm going to spice it up and put some Holy Ghost on it. You need to taste of that? I don't know. Oh, no, this didn't come out right. You know what? I ain't going to cook this no more. <laughs> or you could just stick to what's written. Does everybody understand now? Let's read this now. Look what it says. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of what? 
not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God. How? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Everybody see that? So again, he's reiterating what he spoke in the last in chapter three, verse 12, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. In other words, the things that Paul is writing, the things that we preach here, and the way the Lord make those things plain, everybody should be able to understand it. Nobody in this ministry is, is going to have an excuse on judgment day. You don't have a pastor using big words and going on all this expository foolishness. We just put it right in your lap. The, the way you can understand it. Children understand what's being said from here. So we use great, great plainness of speech. But listen, look at what verse, what, what verse 3 says. So if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are what? If some kind of way you still don't make a connection after the Lord laid out as plain as he does in his ministry, it's because you're lost. If you still can't see it the way God intends for you to see it, it's because you're lost. Isn't that what this Bible say? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? What are they? Now you understand, brothers and sisters, why, you know, I, I, I don't like a lot of questions after I done preached. I don't like a lot of questions after I've preached because I know the Lord have already made it plain. And he said it exactly the way he wanted it to be said. The elect's going to find it. The unelect ain't. <laughs> Does everybody see what I'm saying now? Do you see why, why the Lord didn't? If you pay, pay attention to the, to, the, to, the, to the ministry of the Lord, when his disciples asked him questions, what did he do? He rebuked them. Are you without understanding also? What's wrong with y'all? Why you don't understand what I'm saying? Why is it I preached this whole message and y'all still got questions? Because your heart's not right. Your heart haven't been turned to me completely. That's the reason why you got questions after the fact. Does everybody understand it now? I know the Lord laid his word out very plain. And I, I'm telling you, and it's been my experience, I could spend the next 20 hours explaining what I done preached for an hour, and you still won't get it. I'm going to tell you why. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded the minds of them which do what? So the reason why you don't get it the first time it's preached is because you don't believe it. And then you want to ask preachers all kind of 20 and 30 questions after the fact to try to get you to believe. It's your job to believe. My job is to preach it. Your job is to believe it. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? Notice it don't say convince. People want to be convinced with 100 questions. Your job is to believe. Does everybody understand that now? <laughs> In whom the God of what? Who's the God of this world? Who's the God of this world? What did he do? He blinded the minds. In other words, their understanding. And he used their unbelief to do it. Does everybody see that now? See, here's the way folks want it to work. If you preach it in such a way and override what I already got in my brain about it, I believe it then. So what you want to be is convinced. The Lord didn't tell his preachers to convince anybody. Preach the gospel. If you believe the gospel, you'll be saved. Does everybody see that now? He didn't tell his preachers to convince them. He said to preach the gospel. 
So oftentimes, listen, brothers and sisters, the only way somebody needs to convince you of the truth is if you already got a lie stacked up. And you want them to give you so much evidence that it overrides the lie, the wall that the devil had built in your heart. No, that's not what God's going to do. He's telling you, tear down the lies. When you come to church, don't have no lies there. And then you'll be able to hear it clearly. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> so look at it says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Everybody see that? For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's talking about if you really believe the way you're supposed to, you'll have all those light bulb moments while the word is going forth. It'll make sense to you. But if you don't believe, it won't make sense to you. I might as well be talking in another language. Does everybody see that now? So I, the Bible tells us uh, a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. In other words, does everybody understand what a heretic is? That's a person that has the ability to accept it or reject it. If you belong to God, you ought not to have a, uh, an ability to reject it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? I say if you belong to God, you ought not to have the ability to reject his word. A heretic always keep the reject button right in front of them. Nah, eh, that's not it. Eh, don't believe that one. Come on, come again, preacher. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? That's a heretic. And so we're, we're told, <laughs> preachers, a heretic after the first and second admonition do what? Pray for them. Keep talking to them. Reject. Why? Because if they don't get it the second time they hear it, it's another spirit there. It's something else there, brothers and sisters. And that devil will play with you and play with you and play with you and play with you. I almost, if you keep talking, I'm going to get it. Just keep. I, I told my wife the other day, I, I made up my mind, we're not counseling no more devils. We're going to cast them out and get to the person. <laughs> But we're not counseling any more devils. <laughs> does everybody understand that now? <laughs> what good does it do you? So then you have to wonder, what, so why, why, is, why does the devil love to be counseled? Because he loves to get under the skin and discourage preachers. That's why. Those that are sent to, to offer some kind of wisdom in that situation. He loved to make that, you know, he'll make you think, oh, you, you doing good. And then the next day, what is it? I'm discouraged again. I didn't, could you repeat everything you said three hours for three hours yesterday? Did everybody understand that? Do you know the devil is a tormentor? What else he got to do? You would think the devil would just be out there just stomping and tearing the whole world up. No. <clears throat> He's in your home, won't counsel. <laughs> he loved to be ministered to. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? And what have you think you're doing something? Lord, I'm a great warrior of God. We'll see tomorrow <laughs> when he forget everything you said the previous day. <laughs> mm. 
Does everybody see that now? Let me show y'all that in the Bible. <laughs> Let's go to the, <laughs> so you don't think I'm just up here talking. Let's go to the 33rd chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And we're going to start reading. We're going to, we're going to, 33rd chapter of the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> we're going to start reading at verse 30. It says, also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Everybody see that? And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but what now? They will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. You see the demonic play there. People coming to the church. Can't wait to get there. Can't wait to hear the word of God. Constantly talking about how good of a preacher Ezekiel was. They, oh, they love to hear Ezekiel talk. Look at what it says. Why? Verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. They love to hear it. Uh, one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They just dare to frustrate you, Ezekiel. You spend all this time preaching, they, they praising you and telling you how good, you got a good voice. That's a good speaking voice you got, Brother Ezekiel. We love how you, you make that word plainer than anybody we know, Ezekiel. No, nah, we're not planning on living it, though. No, don't, 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 nah, we're not going to do that. Everybody see that now? They love the counsel and wisdom of God. They know that they are in a real church with a real man of God standing there but will not live what they hear. What is it but a devil? What makes people want to hear the word of God and then not obey it? <laughs> the devil, the God of what we just read, the God of this world has blinded their minds. It don't make sense to them. Does everybody see that now? It don't make sense at all. You see? Now, we had to start there, brothers and sisters, for this purpose. Of what we're going to be talking about today. When people, when the God of this world have blinded the minds of people, they have to replace, uh, from, the, from the gospel of Christ, they have to replace that gospel with another gospel. In other words, with another uh, belief system. Everybody see that now? And my job as a preacher is to make people know what is right and wrong, how to know and how to identify when there's a demonic influence there. Because, see, here's the problem. The devil is in so many places now and, and influencing this society in so many ways to now people don't even know what, what's demonic and what's not. It's, it's just everyday now. It's just everyday life. And so the devil had flooded this world uh, so much so with his ways until what's demonic now uh, uh, is not demonic anymore. We've just accepted it. When I was, when I was uh, growing up, um, my sisters were not allowed to wear pants. That was the norm for me, for me, for us, when I was growing up, when my daddy was alive. And uh, 
you know, then you go to school and you see all these other people wearing pants, women wearing pants, and, and you know, and then even when I was in school, you know, nobody was allowed to have color their hair. You, you were not gonna start your fashion uh, <laughs> business in high school. The, the idea was you, you were not going to do anything to be a distraction. You were there to learn, not for a fashion show. So you're not, you're not going to color your hair. Men were not going to have perms. Does everybody understand that now? Uh, women weren't cutting their hair and, and having boy hair. What none of that. You here to learn. Now, you could dye your hair at 3.30 when you get home and then undye it at 5 o'clock in the morning when it's time to get back to school. But you're not going to live out your best life here. You're here to learn. Does everybody see that now? But now we got folks, you know, I, I remember at one time, you know, when folks started coming to this ministry, uh, the children wearing uh, mixed socks. And I put a stop. No, we're not doing that. Uh, you, they don't sell it like that in the store. So we're not here for no fashion statements. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? The devil has a very subtle way of, of moving people away from what's decent and what's plain. And unfortunately, there's a whole world out there that don't know that the God of this world have blinded their minds. Everybody else is crazy. Does everybody see that? Let's go to the book of Genesis now. You know, you'll see what we're talking about. The second chapter of the book of Genesis. See, it's my job as a, a minister of Christ to make the devil's work plain so that you are not want to be a participant <laughs> in his work. Does everybody see that? Is everybody there, the second chapter of the book of Genesis? Uh, okay, well, let's start reading verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Is that what it says? I will make him and help meet for him. Is that right? And so did the Lord do it? Let's go down to verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? She shall be called what? Because she was taken out of man. So what did Adam call the individual that was made to be a help to the man? How many of you by show of hands is a woman? Now my question is this, what man are you helping? You were created to help a man. You were created to help a man. Is that the gospel being preached today? Is that what society have accepted? No, I'm my own person. No, you were created to be attached to a man, to help that man. And so for those of you who are not married, are you working on it? You are not even doing what you were put here to do. If you are not helping a man, Yo, does everybody understand that? So forget about this foolishness that God made the, man, the, the woman second because he had to do, a, a, you know, a rough draft. The man is the rough draft. How many of you have heard that foolishness? The man is the rough draft. He didn't get it right, so he, he did it again, and we the ones that's right. 
No, he got it right the first time. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? You are an addition to that man. And you were created to help a man. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? I don't care what the feminists say. I don't care what your grandma taught you. I'm telling you why you were created. Anything else is demon possessed. Anything else the God of this world have blinded. You were created to help a man. Not to build your own kingdom and then add a man on the shelf for later on when you want to go out and date him. You were created to help a man. Does anybody understand that now? So if my wife is my help, just naturally so, and I say, sweetheart, I want to help me move this chair over here. Now I'm moving the chair, but she go push the keyboard. I know I got my own, I'm doing my own thing. Well, you're not helping me, ma'am. Now, here's the, here's the idea. The woman was created to help the man to do what he was already doing. She don't come in there with her own ideas of how she going to run it. He's already got his ideas. It's already laid out how he want to do it. You just get in there and help. <laughs> does everybody understand that now? You, does everybody see that now? I used to work at Burger King, and when I got there, I was a help. I was hired to make burgers the way they said. Not to, I, I wasn't invited to nobody's board meeting to, to, to figure out how we can make the Whopper taste better. Well, none, none of that. Now, me personally, I'm going to tell you how I like mine. I no onions, no pickles, and add a little salt because the meat ain't tasting like nothing. <laughs> it might as well be a piece of lettuce sitting there now. <laughs> <laughs> But I never felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to write the executives and say, you know, if y'all just add a little salt, we can blow up. <laughs> and now when I pass by all these boxes that used to be Burger Kings, I'm not saying, see, now if y'all had just followed what I was saying. <laughs> So here's what I want to encourage you, sisters. Don't join a team if you don't like the direction it's going in. Don't get hired at Burger King if you, if you want a Big Mac. Your job is not to change Burger King. It's to get in line with what Burger King is doing. So you were hired to help your husband. So the question is, am I a help or am I a hindrance? Does everybody understand that now? If you are a woman, you are called, God created you to help the man. Does everybody understand that now? You are called to help a man. That's your job. Not to be independent, but to help a man. Does everybody see that now? But I got so much more. I got all these ideas. Yeah, and you shut up for, for the first 10 years, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I don't want to hear your ideas if you, don't, you haven't accepted how to make a Whopper yet. Does everybody understand that now? Now, I know this is going to shock some folk systems, but I don't have nothing but the Bible to go by. You were created to help a man. If you will get that in your brain and in your heart, your marriage will go further. 
you will be more attractive to another man that's interested in you. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, uh, it, it don't take much for a man to run in the opposite direction. Does everybody understand that now? And what, hap what has happened is the devil have perverted things and then gave people an uh, excuse because of their pride for the perversion. When I was in high school, I was in school with people that were married, had families. I was in high school with people that were married. I mean students, married, had families. Now women 30, 40, 50 years old and blaming their singleness on God. And I'm just waiting. No, you're not. Still full of lust, still having sex. You're not waiting, you just haven't been picked. So you lay down the pride and then we can deal with what the real problem is. <laughs> you don't want to help. You want to run it and make him the help. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? <laughs> Y'all want some more? God said it is not good for the man to be alone. Only men have been called to be eunuchs, not women. He never called a woman to be a eunuch. Only men were called to that position. If you're a woman, you need to be linked up with a man somewhere. Does everybody see that now? It don't matter to me how much money. Ain't nobody talking about whether or not you can earn money and all of that. What does that matter? Nothing, if you were made to help a man, nothing will fulfill you until you are doing just that. And look what he says, that he made, he made Adam a woman that was meat for him. In other words, that fit him. Does everybody see that now? I'm trying not to get too far ahead. <laughs> Let's, uh, Brother Pujo, Sister Pujo, y'all come, if you don't mind, come up to this platform here. We're going to do this demonstration again. For those of you that may have missed it. Brothers and sisters, when I was growing up, even when I was growing up, y'all come on up here, stand up here. When I was growing up, women wanted children. I wanted a bunch of children. They wanted to be married. In the Bible, they felt like they were cursed if they weren't married and if they didn't have a bunch of children. And it was so important to them to have children that if they could not have children, they allowed their, they went and picked another wife for their husband so that she could have children for them. That's how much they believed in wanting children. But now, today, women want their freedom. I'm telling you, it's a devil. Anything that goes against this word is the devil. Does everybody understand that? This Bible says that a woman shall be saved how? Through how now? So how in the world is she saved if she can't stand and don't want children? There's something wrong with your thinking. And it is a demonic influence. I'm telling you, it's demonic. 
So then the question, so now when we get away from what God have called for, why does a woman, why do you want a husband if you don't want children? Except for you to be worshipped. Does everybody understand that now? Brothers and sisters, we are living in a sad time where now women, are, they, uh, they have been sold this lie about a career, 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 and then they turn 40, and then they wish that they had started having children when they were 20. And they're starting to wake up and see this was all a lie. I don't feel fulfilled. You want, y'all want me to tell you one of the secrets? And this is for, especially for you young sisters that are here. And you, you couples, uh, you, you teach your children this. Part of the problem is when young ladies, when young girls should be children, they fighting to be grown. And then when they want to be, when they turn, when they do get grown, now they want to be a child again. That's the problem. My, my aunt, my godmother used to tell us, well, you children, be children. You got plenty of time to be grown. You're going to be grown one day, but while you're a child, stay a child and have fun as a child. But what happens is when they turn 13, 14, they just fighting for their freedom and fighting to get emancipated from their parents. And then when they turn 18, they want the parents to pay their bills. <laughs> I don't want to be, uh, I don't like this adult stuff. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? And the devil works against you in that manner. It ain't nothing like a 40-year-old child. You should have been a child when you were a child. You should have took your behind outside and played. Instead of being grown on the phone with some little boy. Does everybody understand that now? You got plenty of time to be an adult. When you're a child, be a child. And so how do you get back out of that? By repenting, asking your parents for forgiveness for your rebellion. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? All right, brother, Sister Pujo, y'all, you face this way. Sister Pujo, you face that way. Uh, you two, come up here. All right, you stand right there on that edge right there in front of Brother Pujo. You come stand on this side right here. Now, they're going to play the devils today. All right, Brother Pujo, can you see this one here? You can't see that one? Sister Pujo, can you see this one? But you can. If you and your, and your husband and you and your wife are on one accord, you'll be able to see both of them at the same time. For the husband, the wife is the eyes in the back of his head. For the wife, the husband is the eyes in the back of her head. And they'll have 360. So this is how, this is the help that God have created. Does everybody see that now? This is the help. So how in the world, how in the world can a man say, I don't need help? And he can only face one direction at, one, at a time. How can a woman say, I don't need to be a help if she can only face in one direction at a time? Does everybody understand that now? So if both of here, you face this way. So if both of them are demons, then how can a man get by? Except his wife is in her place and vice versa. How can a woman get by and, and overcome except the husband is in his place. Everybody see what I'm saying now? So this is what we call the law of attraction, what you see right here. This is the way God designed it. Does everybody understand it now? That's the reason why, oh, you, uh, bro, uh, Sister Pujo, step down here just for a second here. We're gonna call Brother Pujo Adam. God said it's not good for man to be alone. Isn't that what we just read? Why? Because God saw that one. Does everybody see that now? 
God saw that one, and that one was going to clip him. Come on up, back on up, Sister Pujo. Does everybody see that now? So uh, face that face that table right there. Is she helping her husband now? That's, isn't that her doing her own thing? Everybody see that now? All right, you can turn back where you were before. So that's, this is God's picture of what it's supposed to look like. Does everybody understand that now? Now, this, what we see right here, let me get out the way. This what we see, for that to be what God designed it to be, the husband and the wife both have to have their nature. The way she's facing, she's the woman. The way he's facing, he's the man. He's masculine, she's feminine. That's the only way that's going to work. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? So now, so do we all agree Brother Pujo facing his way is masculine? All right, Sister Pujo, Brother Pujo, scoot over just a little bit that way. Sister Pujo, goes st come stand right here. Face that way. Now what is she? Masculine. So now you got two masculine people living in the house. What devil is going to get them? Does everybody see what I'm saying now? No, that's not, this is not the help that the husband needs. He needs his wife to be feminine. If, if, so if she's masculine, they both looking in the same direction and missing this devil altogether. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? All right, so now y'all turn in the opposite direction. Both of you. No, 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 face it this way, Brother Pujo. So now what's going on? You face this way, Sister Pujo. What's going on now? They both feminine. She's feminine, and he's effeminate, what the Bible calls effeminate. What devil are they going to miss? <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? What devil are they going to miss? This one right here. They're no good for one another if both of them are facing that direction or if both of them are facing this direction. Does everybody understand that now? All right, now y'all face each other. Now what do we have going on? The female is masculine. Does everybody see that now? And the male is the, just the opposite. Does everybody see that? Is that working? Now neither one of them are seeing anything. Does everybody see that now? Now do you see, brothers and sisters, why it is important for people to remain in their nature? Don't tell me as a woman you want a real man, but you're, you're the man. You do not, you're going to attract something, but it's not going to be a real man. You're not going to be caught. If you want to run it, if you're a, a bulldozing woman, you're not going to be comfortable with a man being a man. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? So the only way it works, brothers and sisters, the way God designed it, y'all get back to your original state now, is folks got to be delivered so we can get back to this. We got to remove that veil that have blinded people's eyes. We got to teach our young men how to choose a, a feminine woman. It ain't going to take long to figure out she's boss, bossy and you need to have your running shoes on. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, uh, one time I, before I was dating my wife, I was talking to a woman, and I thought we were going somewhere. 
And, you know, I, I corrected her one time and she didn't like it. And so from the, the next day when I talked to her, she burped on the phone. And on purpose, not no excuse me. So from now, from that point on, every time I said something she didn't like, she would burp. The devil just had all that gas on the inside of her. <laughs> no, ma'am, if you got a burping devil, I'm not the one for you. When you can just conjure up demon, demonic burps at at at. <laughs> <laughs> Being a smart aleck, <laughs> you can stay over there, ma'am. It don't need two of us in here burping. We ain't gonna get along. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Everybody see that now? <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> no such a thing. <laughs> the Bible say, God forbid. <laughs> it is not thus. <laughs> so we train up our men to be men. And we train up our women to be women to stay in their nature. Does everybody understand it now? I don't know how I would take it. You, you know, sometimes I, you know, how I would take it. If I went outside and, and, and saw my wife out there playing in the dirt, I don't know how I would take it. I don't know how my wife would take it if she come in the house and saw me plaiting somebody's hair. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? So if you don't want them growing up and being adults playing in dirt, don't let them play in dirt when they're little. If you don't want your boys playing in hand, don't let them do it when they're little. For whatever reason, you know, a generation thought it was cute to start putting wigs on little boys and taking pictures. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? Letting their little boys wear their mama's high heels and laughing at that. No, no, ma'am. No, sir. We're going to beat that devil out right now. Don't you ever look at another high heel. Everybody understand what I'm saying now? The Bible tells the parents to train up the child in the way that they should what? <laughs> oh, you don't, does everybody see what I'm saying now? We train them. We don't wait until a certain age come and, come and they just, just going to kick in. At some point, they're going to figure out they ain't supposed to be wearing heels. Is that the way we do it? So I blame the parents for not teaching their young girls how to be young ladies, for not teaching the boys how to be men. It's the parents' fault. Does everybody see that now? So then what happens, brothers and sisters, if you have people, they grow up, the the woman is masculine and the the man is is uh, feminine and y'all face each other again then they look for the opposite of themselves does everybody understand what i'm saying now now the devil he's perverted but he's a righteous perverted does everybody understand what i mean when i say that there's not one bulldozing woman that want a real man and there's not one effeminate man <laughs> that want a, 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 an effeminate woman. They want the woman to take charge. The effeminate man love that woman that's going to do everything he's supposed to do. But again, what about these two on the end? Does everybody understand that now? So this right here could be married for 50, 60 years. You know why? Because they're still opposite. they still opposite. And, and e this is demonic. Everybody understand that? But listen, to folks that don't have an eye of discernment uh, to see what's going on, it looks like it's working because they get along. 
And the devil will leave them alone because he knows it's perverted. They don't have to worry about an attack because the attack have already set place, have already took place. He accomplished what he wanted. An effeminate man and a masculine woman that's going to get along and they're going to be together forever. Does everybody understand it now? All right, Sister Pujo, you face that way. That's going to get a divorce. Now y'all turn the other way, both of y'all. That will get a divorce. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? Because the two different natures now are colliding in either way. If you have a masculine man and a masculine woman, they're going to collide. An effeminate man and an effeminate woman, they're going to collide. And so ultimately what the devil wants, y'all turn back facing each other now. Ultimately, this is what the devil wants. The, per the perversion that we see taking place in the world today. The effeminate man and the masculine woman, they're going to be married forever. Does everybody understand that now? But in God's eyes, it's still a perversion. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? All right, y'all can go ahead and sit down now. So the only way to make it work according to God's word is for men to be masculine and for women to be effeminate. Does everybody understand that now? Let's go look at one more set of scriptures. Let's go to the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Is everybody there? All right, we're going to start reading at verse 27. says, so God created man. How? How did he create him? How now? How did God create him? What does the world say? There are no good men. How in the world are you going to serve God and man was created in the image of God, and you don't think that that image is any good. You can get everything else right in this Bible, but if you let it come out of your mouth, there ain't no good men, or, uh, you know, what, uh, according to this Bible, man was created in the image of God. Don't you speak against that image. Everybody understand that now. Look what it says. In the image of God created he him. Everybody see that? Look at what else it says. Male and what? Created he what? Everybody see that? Two different individuals. Two exact different natures. Everybody see that? Verse 28. And God blessed them. Does everybody see that? What did God bless? The back to back. One facing that way, one facing that way. That's what God blesses. That's what God blesses. Everybody see that? Look what he said. And said unto them, be fruitful and do what? And do what? Replenish the earth and do what? And what? Everybody see that now? Go out and conquer the world. Get things done. Be prosperous. That can only happen when they are facing opposite directions when they are both in their nature. That's what God blesses. Does everybody see what I'm saying now? So he says, basically, go out and make everything work the way it's supposed to work. I've given you dominion to do it. Everybody see? Does everybody see this drill here? What's going to happen if I press this button? Everybody see that? Y'all want to see it again? This drill works on one concept, what we call the law of attraction. Anything with a motor in it like this, your generator in your car or your alternator in your car, anything with a generator 
this, let's think of this drill as man having dominion. This is what it looks like when husband and wife put their heads together and this is what they come up with, inventions. Everybody see that? Now, what makes this work? A simple concept, magnets. Magnets. That's what make it, when you press this button, that's what make the motor spin, magnets. So, if I put these two magnets together, what should happen? They should stick, right? That is called, in the magnet world, or engineers call it, attraction. So what happens is it's got magnets on, in any alternator or any little motor like this that you can plug in. It's got magnets in it, and what happens is the, it's got magnets around on the outside, and it's got magnets on the inside, and what happens is the magnets, as it's going around, it's pulling from one to the other. That's what makes the motor spin. Does everybody understand that now? So basically it's just going around. If you can imagine there's a bunch of magnets around on the outside and then you got a few of them on the inside and they're getting pulled. And so when you press this, it magnetizes the magnets and it makes it pull in a direction. That's how motors work. That's how your generators work. That's how your um, uh, alternators work. That's how any little thing like this, that's how it works. Magnets. Everybody understand it now. But then something else is funny about magnets. They have what they call polarization. And I'm going to have to show you. If you can't see this, you might want to get up to see it. Polarization. See, it works this way. So this is the positive with the negative. This is the male, this is the female. Both of them are in their place. The male know how to be the male, the female know how to be the female. And what's gonna happen? But then, if the female is wanting to be the male and the male is the male, it is now, is not the attraction in the magnet world and engineering world, you have what they call repulsion. Repulsion is two things that are alike, exactly alike, that's not coming together. How many of you know magnets do that? So what happens then, brothers and sisters? Let me see if I can do it on this. I'm going to do it on each side. What happens when the female is saying, I want a man, I want a man, but she's a man? What's going to happen? Yep, just pushing it away. Just, come on, you don't see me. I'm chasing after you. Why I can't get a man? Why I can't keep a man? Because your nature is the same as his. Does everybody understand that now? And please don't blame it on the Bible. You just waiting on the Lord to send your Boaz because Boaz has come and he is running, running. <laughs> everybody understand? Get, get on away from me, woman. Get, get. No, no. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? What are we, so if we go back to the beginning of this message, what are we talking about? It is a demonic influence because the devil hates marriage. And he does his best to make it seem like it's okay for the woman to be manly, for her to be bossy, for her to take charge and all the other foolishness that she has adopted. And he makes it okay for the, for the man in his mind to let his woman take charge. She knows this better than I do, and that's not what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to help you. You take charge. She's supposed to help. And anybody that's got a problem with that, you send them my way so we can cast the devil out of them because it ain't nothing but a devil that says otherwise. The woman was created to help the man, to be an attraction to him. But you know what happens? What did we say? The, so this was the attraction, right? Now, you go look it up. It's, it's, it's scientific. 
What is this called? Repulsion. Why do you think men are repulsed by manly women? Why do you think women are repulsed by effeminate men? This is going to happen all the time. Does everybody understand that now? You see how these, I can't hardly push them together, and they won't stick together. Does everybody understand that now, brothers and sisters? Even in nature, God teaches us. Even in nature. I was sharing with my wife the other day some wisdom that the Lord had gave me concerning this. This what we're talking about now. My wife was talking about at one time having a, what you call that class now? A etiquette class to teach the women how to be real etiquette and be this real feminine. Sit with your legs crossed, not open like you about to go dribble a ball somewhere. And I, I was telling my wife, you know, we had talked about that before. And I was telling her, I said, you know, the Lord had told me that's not going to work. I, I'll tell you why. I said, because their heart's going to have to change. If, you, if you're a woman, and I'm going to just share this with you, how, how the Lord gave it to me. If you're a woman, now most women want a, want a man. But if you don't like men, you're not going to produce this feminine part of yourself that attracts men. You're going to walk like you don't want a man. You're going to sit like, you. no, ain't no man, no, I don't want a man. Does everybody understand that now? You're going to act like you don't want a man, and a man's going to see that you don't want one. But when a woman is thirsty and she want a man, she gonna, her, her walking is going to change. The way she carries herself, all of that change. You can't change the way people act without changing their hearts about how they feel. It, listen, brothers and sisters, it has nothing to do with how cute you think your face is or how nice you think you are shaped. You can be just as manly with a, with a Coke bottle shape. Or you can be built like this podium and attract all kind of men. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? Because a man is attracted. <laughs> Does everybody see? Yeah, the devil got you in, in grade school in your brain. That kind of attraction is for boys. So it don't matter to a real man how you're built, how cute you think you are. Are you a female? Are you feminine? Do you know how to cooperate? Do you know how to help me? Because see, your pretty face don't make up for your manliness. Your shape, it, it don't make up for your bulldozing. Not at all. Not with a real man. He might sleep with you, but that's all you're going to get out of him. And even that, even that will be disgusting to him. It will be repulsive. And listen, brother, and the same thing is true on the other side with women. Does everybody understand that? A, a real feminine woman want a man that's confident. Want a man that's a man. And a lot of times men don't get respect because they're not masculine. I don't care how much you can bitch press. I don't care how many lions you done whipped. Does everybody understand that now? We have two different natures, and God made it that way. And it's not hard to tell what's effeminate and what's not, what's masculine and what's not. Does everybody understand that now? And I'm telling you, it is a demonic attack in this world that is coming against marriages that God have ordained, that's coming against people that want to be married, and they don't realize what the problem is. I say this, if you could get somebody to sleep with you, you ought to be able to get somebody to marry you.
and, and stay married. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? And I can't imagine what it must do to, a, to a, uh, especially a woman's mind. And we're coming from that aspect because the Bible says that her desire should be to her husband. She's going to have the desire even stronger than a man to be married. But I can't imagine what goes on in her mind for her to be with a man for years and not marry him. And then he turn around and marry somebody else. Uh, for her to know at one point he was attracted to her and then all of a sudden he saw something he didn't like and then he go on and be happily with somebody else. I'll tell you what the problem is. This. Does everybody understand that now? That, that's your problem right there. Men, men are, are naturally boss. They don't want to marry a boss. A boss chick and anything else that you can call it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? You know, somebody's got to cooperate. <laughs> that would be you, woman. You the help, that means you cooperate. Does everybody understand that now? And the devil has done a good job. I tell you, he's something else. He's done, done a good job at making people, at, at giving excuses to people for their failure. I don't think it's hardly a person alive that don't want to be with somebody. But at some point we need to figure out, is my magnet turned the way it's supposed to be turned? Am I turned the way I'm supposed to be turned so that I can attract what I'm supposed to attract? Does everybody understand that now? Two men in a marriage ain't gonna work. Two women in a marriage ain't gonna work. No, it ain't going to work. And, 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 the, and the opposite, them facing the same direction, ain't going to work either. Not for the kingdom of God. God ain't going to bless that. And I, the, today's woman that's bossy and, and just out there rambunctious, she has settled in her mind, well, I just need a man to handle me. What she mean is I need an effeminate man. I need one that's going to give me my way. Is that God's will? It's a demonic attack, brothers and sisters. It's a demonic attack. And I feel sorry for men that have bowed to women. That have bowed. I will not do that. Does everybody understand that now? Uh, you, you don't want to start that because once you start it, it's going to be hard to get off that train. Yeah, it is hard. You give them their way one time, it's hard after that. Because after that, now they're going to start working witchcraft. They're going to be mad at you for disappointing them. Does everybody understand that now? I believe this, that God has created women to help. I believe for every man is designed a woman to help him. I believe that. I, you know, I, I say this, and I think my wife may have said something about it yesterday. Do you know it's impossible for a man to argue with his wife? With his wife, you know why? Because what he say is supposed to go. She's arguing, not him. Does everybody understand that? I mean, you walk into your job and you see the boss arguing with the, the employee. No, the boss ain't arguing. <laughs> you sure not. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a fool that don't mind losing his job. But the boss ain't arguing. <laughs> Everybody see now. And brothers, I'm telling you, sisters, it's my job to turn this, this, this Bible back right side up the way it's supposed to be. In the hearts of people. This Bible means what it says. It's not God is not going to go against his nature. What kind of God will we be serving if he bowed to his church? If he let his church just do what it wanted to do. No, he's not that kind of God. He created a hell for folks that don't want to line up. Does everybody understand that now? So, sisters and brothers, I know this may seem scathing. But I'm telling you, this is the only thing that works in God's eyes. 
you want to know why you can't attract somebody and keep them? This right here. This right here. You be a woman, it's going to be a man out there that's attracted to that. You be a man, it's going to be a woman out there that's attracted to that. But you don't want to be the opposite and attract something that's the opposite of you and both of y'all out of y'all nature. You see that? You see that? It's demonic, brothers and sisters, and let's not, let's not <laughs> go along with that. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this word that we've heard. Lord, and we pray that you will touch the hearts of your people to hear what you had to say today, God. Lord, we thank you so much for making these things plain to us. And God, we pray that lives will be changed, that minds will be changed, Lord. Help us to renew our minds according to your word, not what society says, but your word, Lord. Let us consider, Lord, and take your word as the final authority in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, for those times we tried to rewrite the word in our hearts that you've planted to make it fit what we have going on. Help us, Lord, to come up to what your word says so that we can live victorious and be a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, we thank you all for being here today. And my prayer is that you all will take heed to what the Lord had to say. All right, so now if that's all now, we're going to dismiss you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.